Hello, and welcome to Metro Arts. I am your host, Larry Wallace. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll meet filmmaker and actor Johnny Flynn, explore the artwork of 3D artist and painter Xavier Corcoran, and alternative rock band Raven Love in the 27th will perform in studio. <laughs> Our first guest on Metro Arts Detroit is actor and award-winning filmmaker Johnny Flynn. Let's start with a video of clips from some of his films. At least ill. <coughs> 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 She's ill, she's really, really ill. Tone down your voice, you're sounding kind of shrill. Look at her face, she's looking sort of lost. She ate too much, her cookies she will toss. She sneezed, she coughed, I think she caught a cold. As I recall, she found a little gold. Why am I always first? You are going to be my lab rat. Yes! Yes! Let it take your mind. <laughs> through your mind. Now shall we begin? Oh my, what a wonderful sky. So much to see. Take my hand and follow me. Daisies, rainbows, lollipops, fun. Let us take a journey back to 2001. Unicorns. <laughs> Destiny! Sword, lead me to the princess. Welcome to Metro Arts. Thanks so much for having me. Thank you. So we just saw a demo reel of some of your clips from four of your films. The clip actually started with Candyman. Can you tell us a little bit about that film? Sure. Uh, so Candyman was actually part of a competition for the 48-hour film project. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the first time that I collaborated with my best friend who's a composer. And uh, we drew the genre comedy. So everything I do has a comedy element already. So I immediately felt this pressure to do something different. So we're like, hey, let's, let's try to do a musical. Uh, and basically it's a musical, can't get into too much detail because this is public television, mm -hmm. but there's some edible desserts that kind of alter uh, some, some people's minds a little bit and they right. kind of go on a journey together. Right, for sure. <laughs> now you actually just mentioned the 48 hour film project. Yes. You actually, yeah. ha your, one of your films actually won in 2015, mm -hmm. A Lab Rat Tale. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that film? Sure. Uh, a Lab Rat Tale was actually kind of our second attempt at doing a musical. So we, mm -hmm. we really didn't understand how to shoot a musical, so we kind of brainstormed for a mm -hmm. couple of years. And I, I'm a big, well, I'm, I'm 34, so I'm a, a kid of the 80s, mm -hmm. and there was a show called Zoobly Zoo. Mm -hmm. 
which I'm sure you're not familiar with, but it was nope. a bunch of adults, a bunch of adults uh -huh. in animal costumes that would sing and dance, and it, I always found it a little disturbing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but it was my favorite show, so I decided, hey, I'm going to take that kind of influence and, and make a, a musical and uh, a horror musical uh -huh. and do it in as little takes as possible, which uh -huh. ends up being about three takes, uh -huh. three, three, three full clips. Okay, mm -hmm. and then we saw a sword of destiny. Mm -hmm. That was such a unique ending. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that film. Sure, it's actually not the ending. It's it's uh -huh. uh, it's the be very beginning actually. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, sword of destiny was was an idea that I had uh, just just based on uh, inspired by a friend, and it was another forty eight hour film project where we drew a fantasy uh, genre, mm -hmm. and I don't. I don't typically like to do things uh, traditionally. I like to exaggerate right. realities and, and things like that and always try to bring humor to it. So that was another thing where we, there was a lot of, a lot of uh, choreography, fight choreography, stunt choreography, trying to mix that in in 48 hours with comedy and with you know the full production was, was pretty right. crazy. And now the film Shelfie is one of your newer projects. Yeah, Shelfie, Tell yeah. us a little bit about that. Well, Shelfie is something, uh, for, for the first time we try to put together a short film um, with, you know, with a longer than 48 hour uh, time frame. Mm -hmm. So uh, this one, I called up my buddy Danny Hicks from the Evil Dead movies and said, hey, you know, I've always been creeped out by uh, Elf on the Shelf. Uh -huh. that, thing is, that thing is spooky, man. What do you think about voicing like an evil version of the Elf on the Shelf doll? Uh -huh. And I got, uh, I got all of our, um, all, all of my friends together, all my closest friends, we came together, we wrote, we wrote a script, we put this thing together, shot it over two Sundays, and one of the Sundays was the only snowfall I think we had in December. Oh, and wow. we did not, uh, we had three actors back out on us, mm -hmm. we rewrote the script on the spot, uh, but it's a really, uh, really uniquely, uniquely uh, not kid-friendly version right. of Elf on the <laughs> Yep. Yeah. And aside from being this phenomenal filmmaker, you're also you. an actor. Tell us how did you get started yeah. into the performing arts side? Well, as a kid, I was really shy, mm -hmm. super shy. Um, used to get picked on, bullied, stayed in the house a lot. Mm -hmm. And in high school, we were required to take a speech class. And mm -hmm. one of the speech classes was drama and speech. Everyone's like, it's easy, you do a bunch of skits, whatever. Yeah. Had no choice, was forced into drama, and it kind of just opened up this something inside me. Mm -hmm. And what would you say have been some of your highlights of your acting career? Wow, as far as acting career, I've done some commercials. Uh, there's there's one in particular that I'm fond of with uh, Matthew Stafford, where he doesn't let me into this Pepsi can cave thing, mm -hmm. and I got made fun of pretty hard for that one. Mm -hmm. I got to audition for Detroiters, the local oh, comedy wow. central, uh, central show. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get it. But right. it, was, it was a pretty yeah, big highlight. It was, it was exciting. Uh -huh. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you've been doing this for some years now, mm -hmm. filmmaking. If you could give one piece of advice to any young person trying to break into the filmmaking industry, what would that piece of advice be? I think uh, the advice I would give to anybody, obviously, you know, just do it, go for mm -hmm. it. But you got to do it your own way. I think that's what I pride myself on and the people around me is trying to do it our own way. I mean. You know, you, you can go to film school, you can, you can learn mm -hmm. technique, and all that's really important. There's definitely rules to the game, and the rules should be followed. For sure. But, now, yep. you know, art's art, creativity is, is your own. Yours is different from mine, and right. I think it's really important to express it. And where could people find out more information about some of your films? Sure. Well, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but johnnyflynn.net is my website, and all, uh, all of our films roughly are on YouTube as well. Okay, great. Well, Johnny, I want to thank you so much for being here, and thank you for allowing me to interview you. Thank you so much for your time. You're watching Metro Arts, produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University. <laughs>
but I doubted myself, so I created some pieces, put them in the basement, and at advice from my brother who kept pushing me, started pushing them out into the public again. And this is right now kind of my first step into the, into the art world, so okay. to speak. So. Cool. So I see you brought a few pieces yes. with you today. Can you tell us why did you choose to display these with us today? This, is, this piece is called Exuberance. It is mm -hmm. my first piece. Um, I like to work in a 3D format, but I will jump mm -hmm. to every medium. I will try 2D, 3D. I will try everything there is out there. I have no formal training. <laughs> I never took an art mm -hmm. class. Um, so that's why I feel like I'm open to everything to explore and to experiment. Um, this is why I brought this. This is my first. Mm -hmm. Shows a little bit that what goes on in my mind. Um, this piece here at Play in the Woods, I wanted to show that I can do 2D mm -hmm. uh, art as well, um, just to show I can jump around from different mediums. This one's more of a pencil and ink drawing right here, and this one's a mix of drawing and stone mm -hmm. um, and jewelry kind of mixed with it. So I just wanted to show a couple different diverse pieces, right. and they're my smaller ones because right. I have larger pieces. So Now I understand you have names for each piece. Yes. Can you tell us the names? Yes. This one's Eye of the Beholder. Okay. This one's Exuberance because mm -hmm. obviously it comes at you and it's a little over exuberant. At Play in the Woods, um, kind of like a mystical scene, uh, you know, creatures coming out at night. So um, I think when we all go to sleep, things come back, you know, come to life. Mm -hmm. This is uh, called a Christmas thingy. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of any other name, but it mm -hmm. looks something Christmassy. So mm -hmm. that's and as an artist, where would you say your main source of inspiration comes from? I would say growing up. Um, mm -hmm. I'm one of 12 kids, so I'm the baby of 12. So I went from kind of farmland to living in trees, which gave me inspiration for this one right here, to um, Catholic school where we're in the Gothic cathedrals with the stained glass, and all that combined gave me this idea, I think, for this. It was uh -huh. a mix of both worlds, absolutely insane, with 12 mm -hmm. kids, but um, anything and all, it was crazy, but mm -hmm. it gave me a lot, of, a lot of inspiration, so. Yeah, and how would you say one goes about getting involved into the 3D art world? Stage, when mm -hmm. I was doing stage props, because 2D just doesn't work enough for me. Um, you wanna reach the audience, and you have to reach the whole space of the theater, mm -hmm. so I try to do things that were quite large, um, and that's why I did this. 2D is great, but 3D, I right. think people question it more. They look around, they're looking for different angles. 2D, mm -hmm. you look at it straight on. I want them to really mm -hmm. come around this and view it from different angles and get a, a feel from every section they see of it, so mm -hmm. that's why I do it. Now, Xavier, when painting, do you paint with a specific theme in mind? Whatever's in my mind. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have a, a very vivid imagination. Um, a lot of it comes from like summertime with my son. We go out in this uh, nature, dragonflies catching, and I still do it all. And that's where I get the ideas. A lot of, mm -hmm. I see things everywhere I look, in tree bark and clouds and everything. I see phases and things. So that kind of gives me little uh, ideas. And then I go home and draw like a picture real quick of some idea, and then mm -hmm. I try to create it. Right. They take forever, and that's the mm -hmm. problem. Then I lose thought with it, but I, sometimes it leads mm -hmm. me to another part of the, right. the piece. Mm -hmm. And how do you want viewers to interpret your artwork? any way they, they want to. Um, mm -hmm. This one I just brought from another place I'm displaying it, and some people sat there for 20 minutes trying to figure out what, was, <laughs> what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing, they were wondering what the material is, and I like that. They're trying to figure out how I made it. Because mm -hmm. you know some people go up and they look at a 2D and they do one glance and they walk away. I want them to do multiple glances and figure out what did he use for this? And that always confuses people what I used. And I like that, I'm keeping them guessing. And I don't want to tell, but there are some mediums I've used that I've noticed other artists haven't used. Mm -hmm. so. And I understand you display your work in galleries, of course. What kind of galleries do you usually display your work in? Right now, it's at American House. Mm -hmm. um, any gallery that will accept me, because like I said, I'm a, a complete novice to this. Um, Facebook is great, Art Slant uh, website for art. So I'm really just it's getting my foot in the door. So I'm still mm -hmm. pretty new. I'm very new to this. Earlier we were talking, you say you live in Utah, Arizona. Yes. What made you settle for the Michigan art My scene? son. Your son? I met my son's mother. Uh, we were doing a tour out west dancing, um, and then we went to Toronto, and then, I, and then we decided to, she wanted to be near her family. Her family's here. Mm -hmm. She wanted to have her son near, obviously, with her family, mm -hmm. you know, and so I moved here. I decided to teach. I gave up dancing, um, and with the teaching came building sets and stuff for the right. shows, that, you know, um, and that's why I'm here. Okay. I've lived everywhere, but that's why I'm here now, because yeah. my son, he's, he's paramount in my life. He's the most important thing yeah. to me way above anything else, mm -hmm. so. That's a pretty good reason. That is an amazing reason. Yep. And so. what is the most exciting part about being an artist? People's reactions. Mm -hmm. uh, people's reactions, when they, when they walk by, when I see, that's what, that, it's not about money, it's not about that, when, I, right. when they walk away and I hear them talking about it and they're like, what do you, and when they keep talking about it, discussing, asking questions, that's, that's the, I get the high from that. Just mm -hmm. them wondering what's going on in here for me. Right, <laughs> for sure, definitely. So that, that's the part I, I like the most, so. Uh -huh. um, I think it's just reactions, and sometimes I sneak around and I listen to people, what they say. And yeah. 
Definitely. That, that's my favorite, so. And where could people find out more information about your artwork? I would say, uh, like I said, on Facebook. And I go under f.x.corcoran. Mm -hmm. um, I've always put it on stage, went as Xavier Corcoran, but it's mm -hmm. just easier. I still, still stick with it. But for the art, I'm going to change it up a little bit. Um, art Slant. Mm -hmm. Just look under my name, Art Slant. It comes up, website there. Um, but like I said, I'm still emerging, so I'm trying to get my own website for myself. But, um, and then Wix. Okay. It, Wix is another art site. Uh, for emerging artists, so that's where I put my work on there too. Okay. So if you look under my name, it should come springing up at them okay, at that point. For sure. So. Well, Xavier, I want to thank you so much for being here today. It was so nice interviewing you. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank You're you. watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. And now, performing in the Midtown studio is alternative grunge glam band Raven Love in the 27s. Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. Hi. So you want to start by introducing yourself and members of the band? Uh, well, my name is Raven Love. I'm a vocalist for Raven Love in the 27s. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Ashton Hopkins on guitar, uh, Jax Phillips on drums, and then David Baker is on bass. Okay, cool. Hello, guys. Hello. Okay, and so Raven, can you tell me a little bit more about your album, Shameless, and what created you, what motivated you to create it? Um, well. Those songs were written over a period of about five years. Um, mm -hmm. And when we finally sat down and decided we want to make an album, and mm -hmm. we had this word kind of floating around, shameless, we started pulling at what would fit that vibe, and mm -hmm. this seems to, to be it, so. Okay. Yeah. And you guys all started coming together in 2012. How did you guys all come about? Well, David and I um, knew each other from the sandbox. We went mm -hmm. to elementary school together. And then Jackie and Ashton go way back. Mm -hmm. um, they were uh, 
old friends, and then we all started working together, and it's just this weird mm -hmm. intermingling of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what would you say makes you guys click musically so well? Um, well, everyone has such a different uh, musical background, I guess mm -hmm. you could say. Um, like we like house music, we like techno, we like metal. We do lots of different genres when we mm -hmm. come together. It's just creating something new and fun and interesting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so I gotta ask about the name Raven Love and the Twenty Sevens. Where did it come from? So, on the most basic level, we picked it literally out of a hat. We just put a bunch of different words and numbers and whatever into a hat, picked it, this sounds crazy, what is 27? And we have been talking a lot about like the 27 Club and all sorts of morbid things. And we're like, you know what, that's it. That's mm -hmm. the name. And it just stuck, so. Yep. And you guys are going to be performing another song today for us. Tell us a little bit about that song. Yeah, it's called uh, Wine Red. It's one of our more ballady type songs. Mm -hmm. um, it's just about putting your trust in someone, saying mm -hmm. trust me, and that's what the whole song's about. Yeah, and where can people find out more information about Raven Love and the 27s? We are literally everywhere. Um, we do have a Facebook page that's just um, our name, Raven Love and the 27s, um, but we also have our album, Shameless, available for mm -hmm. streaming um, on Bandcamp. In its entirety, it's gonna be uh, ravenlovein27s.bandcamp.com. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. It was great. Okay. Once again, here's Raven Love and the 27s with Wine Red. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Johnny Fling, Xavier Corcoran, and Raven Love and the 27s for being here today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Larry Wallace, reminding you to always support the arts and cultivate the talent in your community. Mm -hmm.